I know most of you vapers out there probably heard of Geek Vape, right? It just seems like all the products that I've tried up until this point from Geek Vape are top notch, kick ass, they're batting a thousand basically. Well, some of the guys over at Geek Vape decided to branch out, create their own products, and that's when DigiFlavor was born. Anyways, a few months ago, DigiFlavor, they contacted me, explained to me who they were, that they're a sister company of Geek Vape, and that they wanted to work with me on their next project and get something out before August 8th, and that immediately piqued my interest because of what I just mentioned, how Geek Vape, they produce some solid products up until this point, right? Yeah, I got excited, but the biggest question that I had was, did they support vape advocacy? And you know what? It turns out they want to support vape advocacy. They just don't know what steps to take in order to do so. And that, my friends, is when I explained to DigiFlavor about the fundraiser I'm putting together. That's right. I'm doing a fundraiser. I got all the details coming in the next few videos, but I'll just go ahead and explain to you what I explained to them. This fundraiser, it's meant to benefit the AVA, CASA, and not blowing smoke, okay? I explained that to DigiFlavor, and they immediately stood up and said, okay, well, how does 10K sound? And I go... T -t 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 $10,000? And they go, yeah, how does $10,000 sound? Hell yeah. And that's how this thing was born. The idea of this thing was born. But I want to step back and I want to explain to you guys, if DigiFlavor is willing to donate $10,000 in order to support vaping, what is this company going to do? What's this company going to do? They're going to want to match it. They're going to want to beat it. That is awesome to me. Hopefully we got some great things building up and moving forward. But that's what this fundraiser is going to be about. Again, I'm going to explain all the details in the next few days. We gotta get to this, this. Now Rip, what is the Faro? Oh yeah. Well the Faro is a dripper tank. It's a bona fide dripper tank. I wanted to create something that was meant for the dripper, but also had a reservoir around it. So you have this reservoir, this two millimeter reservoir running in 360, right? And then isolated from that, you've got your airflow. And your airflow runs up, runs up, up underneath the coil. It's blocked off from the reservoir. And then above that is your deck. You've got these freaking massive clamps, dude. Massive screw down, spring loaded clamps. It's made for your massive clap baby. It's made for your frame stable Claptons. It's made for your fuse Claptons, your alien Claptons, your staggered fuse Claptons. If you're the type of vapor, you just want to pop a macro build, a standard macro, a standard build in there. This is not meant for you. This is for the big time builds, guys. The build I have in here right now is a framed, a single frame stable Clapton reading at 0.15 ohms, and it is chucking some of the best flavor that I've ever experienced ever from vaping, okay? That's what I designed this thing for, but it takes two. It takes a coil, and it takes a kick-ass device, but in this one right here, this Faro, I've got a dual fuse Clapton reading at 0.15 and oh, she's a chuck of fine. What I wanted to create was an authentic bona fide dripper tank meant for the freaking bona fide coil builders out there. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead, dive down, show you this thing up close and personal, how easy it is to pop a single coil build in there, a dual coil build in there, how easy it is to wick, how easy it is to fill it up, to close off the juice flow control, the reservoir. We'll come back. I'll show you the performance of this bad boy and then I'll let you know how to enter the giveaway. That's what we're going to do. Sound good? Let's go. So here's the packaging for this Faro. Oh yeah, it says Digi Flavor up top. It says Faro. The Dripper Tank, baby. And it says a Rip Trippers Project at the bottom. Okay, on the side, you got Digi Flavors website. On the other side, you got some information, warning information. Oh, yeah, and it says black or stainless steel. This is the black version, but I'm going to show you both today. On this side, it's got my, ooh, my signature. A Rip Trippers Project. On the back, more information. Pop the lid, and the first thing you are going to see is a black pharaoh and an extra Delaware drip tip. And at the base of the box, you get a baggie of extra goodies. And that baggie of extra goodies includes some extra O-rings, a Delrin standard 510 drip tip adapter, two extra screws, and a tri-tool. And here's the extra drip tip that comes with this. It's made of Delrin. It's wattish bore. It's got a 10 millimeter bore all the way through, double O-ring down at the base. So here she is, boys and girls, the Faro. Now, it comes in two different color options, stainless steel or black, and black, in my opinion, I think the black is going to be a big hit, guys. The black looks dope. I love how you have the contrast between the Faro and the black. The brushed uh, stainless steel is fantastic as well, but I really like the black. It's just something about the black that just pops, in my opinion. She's 25 millimeter in width, and she's 45 millimeter in height. Down there, you got the Faro laser edge. And then down below at the base, you get a 510 pin, gold-plated 510 pin, which is adjustable. 510 thread, smooth, smooth, smooth. Also, also at the base, you got my signature, a Rip Trippers project. It says the Dripper Tank. It's got the serial number down here and manufactured by DigiFlavor. One more look at this laser etched Faro. Gotta love it, man. Up top, it's got an anti-spitback drip tip, 10 millimeter bore, just like the other one, but check it out. You got the spitback guard down below. Top of the Dripper Tank. Now this barrel is threaded onto the base, just like so, and I will say this, there is a tight fit, and the reason why there's a tight fit is because of this O-ring down here. You take the O-ring off and there's not going to be a tight fit at all, it's going to be smooth as the baby's bottom, but we want it to be tight, we want it to be leak proof, and that's why I put this O-ring on here, and you receive spares like I showed you. And just to give you guys an example, what I did was I took the O-ring off of here because I wanted to show you how smooth the threads are, and look. 
No O-ring, smooth as a baby's bottom. So for this next clip, I brightened up the exposure because I wanted you to see this really cool design down here at the top of the, the cap, but here it is, the threads, nice clean, clean threads, especially for the price point. And check it out, we got a catch cup at the top. Pretty cool, huh? Deep catch cup, you got the base of the anti-spitback drip tip, but this catch cup, the reason why it's here, and the reason why there's not a conical type design at the top of the uh, the top cap is because this catch cup is going to play a huge role with the way this dripper tank is designed, because you could be out and about, let's say you're in your car and you're vaping, you got your reservoir, which I'm gonna show you filled up, it's, it holds two mils of juice. Let's say you're to vape, you were to pop it on your seat and it would have fall over on its side. Well, because this catch cup, it's going to contain the juice. The juice is going to pull into this catch cup instead of coming out the top. So when you go to tip it back up to vape, it, that juice that's been sitting in the catch cup is going to just fall right back down to the reservoir. <laughs> cool feature, huh? So here's one of the main attractions of this bad boy, the Faro, the dripper tank, and that's the deck section. And people, when they saw it on the Digiflavor site for the first time, a lot of people were like, man, there's not enough room to build on. Shit. There's plenty of room. 11 millimeter by 14 millimeter. But this thing is bad fucking ass. This is why we designed it. You got one screw in the middle and it's spring loaded. So it's spring loaded screw plates. Stainless steel plates, but you got your airflow three slots down here and it comes up from the base, okay? So your coil sits in the middle or coils sit in the middle. And then around here on the edges, you got your reservoir and that holds two mils of juice. So your airflow comes up from the center and the reservoir sits around it, 360 around the airflow. Triple airflow comes from the side and it's on one side. And the reason why we designed it to be on one side is so when you vape it, you want this away from you. You got your peak insulator and look at this, you got this little tab. And what this does is it close off the reservoir. Now I will say this, when you first get it, it's going to be a little tight. You got to juice it up. When you juice it up over time, it's going to loosen up. Also another thing, when you first get this, these clamps are going to be down all the way. So when you go to turn it, it's going to be kind of uh, restricted and it's because of the screws, just to let you know. So you got to unscrew these and when you unscrew it, then you'll be able to turn it or adjust a lot easier. Again, you got the bottom triple adjustable airflow and that clicks into place and it closes off all the way if you want. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and pop a build in there. The first build I'm gonna pop in here is going to be Squid Dude's frame, Staple Clapton. And the reason why I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna show you is because he designed it specifically for this Faro and actually he's gonna be selling them on his site. And I'll post a link down in the description of where you can find them. All right, so check it out. This is the coil that I'm gonna be using for single coil mode today. And let me tell you something, this coil in single coil mode pays better than 90, 95% of dual coil builds out there in my opinion. I'm serious, this thing is a freaking beast, especially in the Faro. And this is made specifically for the Faro and this is made by a guy by the name of Squid Dude. Squid Dude is probably one of the best coil builders in the world right now. So check it out. Here's the frame staple Clapton build and it is absolutely gorgeous. You got both leads going under in the opposite direction and that's what you want for this Faro. And I mean look at her. Goodness gracious. Great balls of coils. And this sucker's been wrapped around a 2.5 millimeter bit. So what I do is I pull the screws out just a little bit more. You want there to be a gap between the end of the plate and the end of this section right here. About right there. You want that gap. It makes it easier to insert your leads. Same thing on the other side. Gotta have a gap. Slide one lead in, the other lead in. Line it up. Make sure she's centered. Tighten one side down. Tighten the other side down. Next step, what you're gonna to wanna to do is pull down. Pull down the coil. You want the coil to be as close as those air slots as possible without touching. That's gonna to maximize your flavor. So I'm gonna pull it down. Right there, guys. The closer, the better. Clip the leads. Oh, yes. So while we let this coil cool down, I want to go back and talk about this O-ring, and I should have mentioned this before, but when you pull your Faro out of the package for the first time and you clean it after you clean it up, what I suggest you do is juice the O-ring up, juice the threads up, because when you first get this, it's going to be a tight fit. I mean, it's meant to be, but juicing the threads up and juicing the O-ring up is going to allow it to be much smoother. So I got my organic Japanese cotton wick, and I've used the Scottish roll type of wicking technique with much less cotton. It's just, you know, it works for me with this coil, and here we go, going to install her, and it's going to be a little tight. There we go. And what you want to do is fluff the ends out. And what I do is I just tuck it. That's all you want to do. You don't want to stuff it, you just want to tuck it. And you want to pull it over to the right on each side, both sides, pull it over to the right, just a touch. So right now I've got the reservoir completely open. Okay, and all we're gonna do is fill her up. Do you see that juice jump out like that? And look at that. <laughs> look at that frame staple Clapton. That's crazy. It just sucks so much juice up. 
pull it over to the right just a little bit. See that, you got a little gap? That's that reservoir. And that sits around in 360 around the air channels. I'll pull it over to the right again on this side. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close the reservoir off pretty much all the way. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna juice up this O-ring like I talked about earlier. And by closing that off, juice is not gonna be able to escape, guys. But I'm just gonna juice up the threads just a little bit. Now before I go to screw on the top cap, I'm gonna open this reservoir back up. I'm gonna open it up about right there. That way it's able to wick efficiently. Cause if you close it off too tight, it won't wick as efficiently. You gotta find what works for you though. That's why we give you this option to open and close it. Oh yes. Oh yeah, smooth as a baby's bottom. See, after you juice up that O-ring and those threads, I mean, it's smooth. So check it out. I went and vaped on her for about 20 minutes until she was dry, until she was almost dry. Now you don't have to take the chamber off. And we designed it like this. Let me show you. When you want to go juice her back up, see these holes right here, these air slots? Now, like I said, when you vape, you want to make sure these air slots are facing that way, away from you. And when you go to juice her up, all you got to do, just take the drip tip out, make sure that the air hole slots are facing that direction. And if you look in there, either on this side or on this side, that's where the wicks are which means that's where the reservoir is. So all you have to do is tilt it one direction, 10 drops on one side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay? Then you tilt it and do 10 drops on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And you can put more drops in there, but I recommend starting at 10 on each side until you get the hang of it. Like I said, it holds two mils. But if you do 10 drops on each side, I mean, you could go that speed every time and you're never gonna have any leaking. It's never gonna come out. See that? Bone dry, baby. I can tilt it down. It's not gonna come out. No leaking, guys. So like I said, you never have to take this barrel off unless you wanna switch out the coil on the wick. Now watch how easy it is to install this dual fuse Clapton build. Make sure for both coils, both leads are going under in the opposite direction. Make sure the coils are as centered as possible. Tighten down the other side. Pull it down. Just like that. That's what you want right there. Easy peasy, what a sleazy. Guys, this is easy to install your freaking builds. And you got plenty of room for dual coil and single. Oh yeah, we got her glowing from the inside out. Yeah, buddy. Insert the wick. Want it to be a little snug. Oh yeah, just like that. Again, same thing as a single coil, fluff out each end. Tuck it in there and push it to the right. Tuck it, push it to the right. And right now she's wide open. Gonna go ahead and fill her up. About right there. So that right there, ladies and gents, is an up-close view of my Faro Dripper Tank by Digiflavor. Let's go ahead and take her back to FaceTime. Alrighty, boys and girls, so I've been rocking this dual fuse Clapton in this dripper tank for the past, I would say, two hours. Vaping, 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 dripping, dripping, dripping. When it starts to go a little muted or a little bit dry, I'll drop 15 drops on each side. Like I said in the video and the close-ups, 10 drops is where to start when you get the hang of it, before you get the hang of it, and then you can bump it up to 15. 15, I would say, is the cutoff for each side, so it's a total of 30 drops, and I've been able to go like 30 hits. 30 freaking hits with this .15 ohm dual fuse Clapton build, and that's at 50 watts. Now, if you bump it up at higher watts, 60, 70, 80 watts, you're going to get less hits because it's going to be sucking more juice up. But let me just show you what this thing can produce at 50 watts. I got the airflow wide open. She's sitting on this, uh, this Relo 200S. Here we go. Oh yeah, and I've already taken about freaking 20 hits and I'm getting still kick-ass, full-on, oh man, flavor. I mean, vapor for days, flavor for freaking days. I'm tasting every single nuance of the juice. All right, so it's starting to get a little bit muted. That's probably about, mm, I'll say the 27th or 28th hit. Now, all you got to do, like I showed you in the close-ups, pop that drip tip out. You want to make sure that the airflow is facing the opposite direction, and then you tilt and drip it on one side, drip it on the other. 15 drops on one side. Okay, turn it. 15 drops on the other. All right, no leaking, nada, booyah. Pop the drip tip back in there, no gurgle. I mean, it slides right down in the reservoir and because you have the wicks tucked in there, it's constantly feeding, constantly. I'm gonna take her up just for you guys. Let's say 70, 70 watts. <laughs> no spit back and I'm using the anti-spit back drip tip. That's what I recommend. 
Now onto the single frame staple Clapton, and this single coil is one of the beastiest, probably the beastiest single coil that I've ever used. 0.15 ohms. I'm vaping her. I'm starting her at 45 watts, okay? But I got the airflow wide open. Got her sitting on this Panzer 200 watt DNA 200. Here we go. You know what? Let's go to 80. 80 watts. And the flavor I'm getting off this is bangerang as well. But yeah, if I had to compare the vapor production to the flavor on this device per build that I put in here, I would say the flavor is better than the vapor. And that should tell you something because you see the vapor. I mean, she's a chugging for days. So with all that being said, in the description of this video, I'll post multiple links to where you can find this sucker. Now on to the giveaway. And in order to participate in the giveaway, what you got to do is you got to go over to riptrippers.com, just like all my other giveaways. Go to riptrippers.com, click on giveaways, and you'll see this post right here. Click on the title of that, follow the rules. You can only participate at riptribbers.com. Do not participate here. If you participate here, you will be disqualified. Good luck, everybody. This is Rip Trippers, and remember, smoking is dead. Vaping is the future, and the future is now.